Today I'm here to review episode 12 of The Walking Dead titled Clear. Now, I enjoyed this episode. Scott did his thing. Now, Scott, for some of you who don't know, Scott will be uh doing the writing for next year, for, for uh, well, for next season, season four of The Walking Dead. And he did an excellent job on this episode in terms of character development. We got very, very good character development. Even Michonne got a little character development, and, I, and that was very inter or, well, interesting to see that from her. And we actually got to see her mouth actually move more than a couple of times. That was very um, um, interesting. I like that. And I like his writing overall because Scott has been around for a long time. He helped with season one. He helped. He did some writing for season two. He did some writing for season three. And you all know, and we all, and we all know that Glenn Mazar is stepping down for season four. So Scott will be taking over. Well, well, we'll be replacing him in terms of writing episodes. So Scott did an excellent job, and especially with Morgan's character. Oh my God. The actor who plays Morgan, Lenny James, that, uh, um, if that's his name, Lenny James, he did an excellent job playing Morgan. He made this character look so desperate. I mean, at, at, at this point, Morgan was at his breaking point. He was thinking the only thing, the only thing out of this world was death. And he made him seem so desperate, wanting to die. Make, making this character just want to die and, and, end, and end his life like that. So, Lenny James, oh my God. Great actor. And I enjoy his acting for, for, well, for his character, Morgan, in this episode. Now, let's talk about the episode itself. The brief summary of the brief summary for this episode is though basically we get to see Morgan again. Now, Morgan, Morgan Jones is from episode one of the Walk Well from season one. Episode 1 of The Walking Dead, titled Days Gone By. And we see Morgan Jones, and we also see his son, Dwayne Jones, in Season 1, in Episode 1. But now, in this episode, it's, re it's revealed to us that Morgan's mind perspective has changed on how he views the world now. Because in Season 1, he had the same mind perspective as, um, that Rick had. The black and white mind perspective, looking at humans... Look at, looking at each human difference in, in terms of just list, looking at everything different, thinking it, thinking everything is the same as it used to be. But we can see um, the, the way he view like the way he views life is totally different now because at this point he lost his um his his last grip of sanity that he had left because of his son's death. And I noticed something too. This Morgan has a very bad, a very bad vengeance when it comes to human slash walk, walk zombies. So his mind perspective has changed a lot, and Rick have Rick Rick have changed too. So let me give let me touch on my overall thoughts in this episode. Now, when we first see the beginning of this episode, we see uh um, look, look like a cardboard. It's not a cardboard box, but but we can tell that we can tell we can tell that somebody had had, had basically uh, tore a piece off a cardboard box and basically made it into a sign. Now on that sign we can see Aaron or Aaron. Aaron on the on the top says Aaron, and at the bottom it says we turned for Stone Mountain. So Aaron is the zombie female that we seen in this episode. That was on the passionate well, that was on the driving side of um on, on the driving side of the car trying to well trying to attack Michonne. Now, on that bracelet, you we can see Michonne looking at that bracelet, that bracelet on her arm, and it says Aaron. Now, now on back to that sign, what I was saying, the signs say we have tried, we have tried for Stone Mountain. Now, I don't know if that was some miss. Some miss um the sentences not being wrote written right, or not even spelt right. But after that, it has a minus sign and it has J. Now it's revealed that this guy J has wrote this. It's unknown. It's it's unknown exactly who J is, but he had to be part of a group, or at least he was a leader of a group that Aaron was in. If you get what I'm saying. 
Now, once I seen this sign, the first thing came to my head because this sign was telling her well, well, well this sign was telling her where well where they was heading to. Once I seen this sign, the first thing popped in my head was season two when Rick had lost Sophia in the woods. And then we all remember when the group writes on the car window and tells Sophia, well, well tell Sophia if she runs across that car, they, they got the location on, 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 where, where, on where they're um, located at. And we can also see food and supplies. On the um, well, 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 on the trunk of the car, basically telling her, what, basically telling Sophia where to come home at. But it's revealed later on, later on in season two, the whole the whole time they're looking for Sophia, she's already dead. So yeah, this right here really caught my eye. That sign caught my eye because, like I said, it was just like Sophia because. It's revealed that Sophia had got bitten by a zombie, just like Aaron is in this episode. She got bitten by a zombie herself, just like Sophia did. So we see her in this episode, and we see Rick, we see Rick and them kill her. Also, we see a hitchhiker, and this hitchhiker, hitchhiker, his hitchhiker is begging for help. And to me, at some point, I felt like that was unhuman of Rick and them leaving him like they're running on that road. Because this guy had a very big bag on his back, and he was carrying a lot. But but, let, but first, let me finish touching our phonies. All right? And it's, and, it's, and it's like this. I remember at one point, Rick was in that same boat that guy was in. Remember season one? The CDC lab? Remember when Dr. Jen, when Dr. Jenner... Wouldn't let them well. Wouldn't let Rick and them into the um and in, 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 into the into the CDC lab. We literally seen Rick begging to get in the CDC lab, just like that hitchhiker was. Second, we see Rick begging Herschel to stay at his farm. Now I'm not saying that. Yeah, I'm not saying that because I, I I totally understand. I totally understand the concept of you can't trust everybody. You can't. But I'm saying, I think they should have at least gave him a chance. And I'm not saying necessarily bring him to the prison. You could have at least dropped him off somewhere that was safe. You didn't have to leave him like that. That was unhuman. And, and like I said, you don't have to trust somebody. But it don't hurt to give them a chance either. And I felt that was wrong because at the end of the episode, it's revealed that that hitchhiker was dead. He got killed by zombies, and the only thing they the only thing they seen was his bag. So they stopped in the middle of the road and took his supplies. So this show you what this world has came down to. In the words of Dale, this world has came down to survival of the fittest. That's that's all it is now. Next, we see a car crash. Now, we all know at this point, Rick and them cannot go through. Can't, they can't keep straight on that road because it's a car crash. We see multiple cars piled up on each other, at least crashed. And we can see these human, well, not even human because their flesh is completely gone. It's revealed that they died from the car crash they sell. We can see our bags in the car. And we can see, and now once we look at these humans, we can see they flesh are missing. So, so we know for a fact the zombies has well, well have ate their flesh off their body. But we can see the car doors open. We can also see windows broken. So those people had, well, before they got killed by the zombies or got eaten or they got devoured, in other words, they had to die in a car accident because we seen multiple cars on that road, right? Next, we see another zombie on the side of the road with a vehicle on his body, and he's literally trying to—he's literally trying to get from under the vehicle. So once these cars collided, he had to flip off the road in his vehicle, and somehow that vehicle landed on top of on top of him on top of him. And, and that vehicle ends up killing him. So he ends up turning after that. And what I found funny is because Milton mentioned this. He mentioned this theory in the beginning of episode, in season three. And I'll never forget this. He says that zombies starve slower than humans. Now this right here is a fact. 
because this is how the human body works for some of you who don't know. Anytime a human being doesn't eat nothing, anytime he, the human, be, human being doesn't eat or drink, the body feeds off the human fat, well, well, the fat tissues and the muscle tissues. So once the body does that, it breaks down the fat tissues, the muscle tissues, and it turns it into energy so the human body can still maintain itself. Why do you think when you don't eat, like, say a human don't eat for one day, you see the human still, well, 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 you see that we are still able to walk, talk, although we might not have the same energy that we would have had if we would have ate or drunk water, we still have energy to move around to, and do other stuff. It might not be the strongest energy, but we still have energy because the body is living off the fat tissue and the muscle tissue. But as soon, soon, don't get me wrong, soon enough, the body will start shutting down because the body is not getting any water or food. Now, I know for a fact that we can live longer with water, it's just with water itself, but the body will start shutting down, the, the, um, the organs in the body will start shutting down to make it simple. If, well, 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 if we don't eat nothing in a couple of days, so eventually a human will die because they're, they're dying of starvation. But here's the problem with these zombies. Now, forgive me for my language. These motherfuckers can survive by the same, well, they can't. I, I said they can. This is a fact. They survive off the same thing a living human being body survives off of. And as I just stated. Fat tissue and muscle tissue. Zombies are able to survive off of that. That's the reason why they're still alive. But remember what Milton said. They starve a lot slower, a lot slower than than the actual human than the actual human does. And there's something I knows about this. They got a decaying, rotten body, but they're still surviving off. They still surviving off the stuff that us humans surviving off of. So yes, that's how zombies are able to survive. They survive off the same stuff a normal human being survive off of. I don't get it. Don't ask me why. Because like I say, their bodies are rotten. It's decaying every day. And at one point, if this continues with them, don't get me wrong, they do starve a lot slower than us, but they can die from it. But it takes a very long time because it's revealed in this episode that a year have already passed and they still live. Well, 99% of them still live. And they're still living and they, and they, live, and they still live off of that. Those certain things in their body that us humans live off of. Next, this is something I like about Carl. Okay, he tells Rick, oh, it's your fault why the car got put in the mud. And Rick apologizes for him, apologizes to him for this happening. It's obvious that if you've seen the episode, you can see that ain't no way in the world Rick and them would have made it through those group of cars that those cars that was in the middle of the road that was blocking the road out. So how in the world was it Rick's fault? He tried to he, he he tried to find another way through, and he accidentally runs into he accidentally runs into um wood to mud into a mud hole. Well, not in the mud hole, but he the car goes into a, into mud and gets stuck. But he says Rick fought to my issue fought, and Rick apologizes. Listen, I understand that car is still a child, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And like I say, they try to make him seem like he's grown. And at this point, yeah. Carl does have a um uh he does have a decent mindset in terms of surviving, in terms of like living on his own. But at the end of the day, he's still the child because in the recent episode, this made me realize he was still a child because when he told Rick about being the leader, he stri he strictly tells Rick, if I tell you something, you promise you won't get mad. That's something a child will say, and I hope you guys recognize that. That's how it is. He's still a child. At the end of the day, he's still a child. He might know how to survive on his own and have and having the dope mindset in terms of surviving. But this guy is still a child. This is what is that boy is still a child. But this is the way he blamed Rick for it and Rick apologized to him. I didn't like that. Because that was uncalled for. That, that, that wasn't Rick's fault. 
and we see Rick and we see Carl talking about Michonne talking about her joining the group and basically stating that Rick saying that the only reason he let her uh, come with them because they're they, basically because they're both looking they're, they're both out for the same thing meaning uh, fight the governor together. Now at this point I remember when Rick said he didn't really need nobody. He didn't say it like that but he was really annoying a lot of people that was trying to join the group in terms of helping him, even Tyrese. So ain't no one in the world. He can't deny it. Now, he cannot deny it. He needs Michonne. He made it clear in this episode. He didn't say he needed her, but the, it's the way he said it. He was like, they both have common interest. Well, well, in, well interesting. Well, um, interest. Well, interest. Thing. I can't pronounce it right now. My tongue is tongue-tied. And my throat is killing me, Miss Burning. But yeah, they they both have the same motives in terms of helping each other, and they both, and they and they both and they both trying to help each other with the same thing. So it's a common thing right now. But then he try to make it look like he don't. Um, he try to make it look like after after this done, she can go. I'm I'm, I'm gonna make a leave. You ain't gonna make a leave because first style, Carl is your what. He's your, he he's the only person in in um the baby Judah. He's over he's over um protective over Carl, right? So why in the world would you let a stranger like Michonne follow him if you didn't trust her? Don't make no sense to me. He's lying. He know deep down inside he trusts Michonne because he's seen what Michonne did. Did to those walkers to save Hersh. And I said that three times. He know it and he seen Michonne help him fight the governor when the governor attacked the prison. He know Michonne is trustable. Tell me he didn't want to leave her around Merle and stuff. You brought her because you needed her. And the only reason he kept Darren up because he needed somebody he felt that that he felt that he felt that had that second with uh, well, that second leader thing going on, and Daryl could is, is that second leader to me, so he let Daryl stay at the prison, not just because of Merle. He just he needed Daryl though, because Daryl is, is is probably considered a second leader compared to Rick. So yeah, so he trusts Michonne. I don't know why he keep pretending like he he he. Well, I don't know why he keep putting his front on like he he don't. Now let's talk about. Morgan, like I said at this point, Morgan has lost his um his 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 uh his grip on in, on insanity on sanity right now. He also has a lot of vengeance when it comes to him and Walkers because I remember him telling Rick because him and Rick they did have their shootout with the group and Rick did go back to go look for the guns at Sheriff Station. It also revealed that Morgan had burnt down all the houses. In the neighborhood of Kings County, and this right here was very interesting because the episode is named Clear. So I'm pretty sure he cleared out all of those areas because it's revealed that Rick House had got overrun by zombies. So he burnt down the whole neighborhood. So and once he did this, he burnt down all the pictures that was in the house. I mean, all the merchandise that was very that was very valuable. He burnt it all down. And once he wakes up after they have their conflict with each other in terms of shooting at each other, he go, he get back to his senses and he tells Rick that Rick gave him the gun to kill his wife, which he didn't. Rick just gave him the gun to protect himself. He didn't give him the gun in particular to kill his wife, Jenny. And he was angry at himself because he was being selfish. And I stated this before in terms of being selfish. I remember saying this. You knew your wife was dead. He was the person who told Rick about the zombies. Rick, Rick, Rick didn't even know about zombies. He called the zombie that that um that that Morgan shot in the head in season one. He called that zombie a man. That is, and and, and then the Wayne corrects him. He said that's not a man. So Morgan knew about this, about these zombies, and he knew about the bites and how dangerous they was. But still. He could not force himself to kill his wife because he was being selfish. He still wanted her around, although that was not her still inside of that body no more. That was something else in that body, but he could not. He could not face allow himself to kill his wife because, like even he said, he was being selfish. He wanted to keep her around, 
and he tell Rick how the Wayne died. He strictly says he went into the basement to look for supplies, and he told the Wayne to stay at the top of the uh top floor. I guess I guess at the top in the top of the room. And he said once he get back, he see Jenny, his dead wife, zombie wife, and he see the Wayne pointing the gun at him. He say he yells at the Wayne. Now once he does this, the Wayne looks at him. And Jenny sees an op she sees a opening, then she attacks the Wayne, and she kills him. Now, let me correct you on this, because people come up to me, well, Jenny had ate had ate the Wayne. Jenny didn't eat the Wayne. She bit the Wayne. The Wayne died from blood loss. A zombie bite. If a zombie bite kills you, you die from blood loss. Okay, I'm, I, was, I was just wanted to say that. You don't die from the, um, 99% of the time when a person die from a zombie bite, they die from the bacteria in the zombie's teeth and nails. They do not die from the bite. If you die from a zombie bite, you die from blood loss. Look at Amy from season one. When she got beat, she died from blood loss. If that's the case, if a bite killed you as soon as they bit you, wouldn't T-Dog be dead? T Dog got bit and he was still alive. Although he sacrificed himself in the um heroic death, he was still alive. The first the first time he got bit, he was still alive. So you don't die from the bite. You die from the bacteria from the bite. Now, look at Morgan's wife, Jenny. Now, like I said, the Wayne died from the bite. He died from blood loss. And then he turned into a zombie. Now, look at Morgan's wife, Jenny, as I just said. <laughs> she died. From the symptoms that you get from the bite in terms of the bacteria, the nasty bacteria from their teeth. She died from a fever. So, yeah. I hope I made myself clear. I'm pretty sure some of y'all knew that already. And, and next, Michonne got some good character development in this episode. And I got to say this. Michonne, she actually talked. She ate chip. She ate Morgan food up in his house. She helped Cara out. She helped him. She helped him go go to the cafe. She was able to help him get the pictures, get a picture. Of the well, they old family picture. And this is something I don't, I didn't like about Cara because he was being too whiny. You knew it was multiple zombies in that calf. Hell, a zombie even tried to attack him. The, the zombie literally waited. And that, that was what I'm saying. Zombies, some zombies are dumb. And some zombies are not dumb. Some of them, some of them know to, some of them know to when to attack. Because this zombie strictly waited on Carl to stand up on that bar. And he grabbed him on his leg and tried to bite him. If it was not for Michonne, Carl would have been dead. So, yeah. And Michonne goes back into the calf, to the cafe, or calf, to get a picture, to get their family picture, because Cara said he wanted to show Judith uh, the picture of, of, of what Lori, her mother Lori looked like. And he also stated that he needed a new baby back, because for some of you who don't know, his, uh, his baby sister Judith is actually sleeping in a cardboard box with, with the name Little Ass Kicker wrote on it. And that's not, to me, that I feel that's not good. So, I did agree with him about going to go get the baby bed. About the, about the baby bed. And we see that Michonne likes art. Because she went back and she, she went back in there to get the picture. And she also went in there for, for her own purposes. To get a, um, a sculpted cat. Look like with multiple, look like, look like somebody colored multiple colors on it. So, Michonne likes art. Art. And she also tells Rick about her dead boyfriend she used to talk to. And her dead boyfriend name is Mike. So, she got some good character developed from Michonne. She opened up a little bit. Because she tells Rick she used to talk to her dead boyfriend just like he, she, just like she know he, he see dead people. And Morgan has some very deep words because I remember him talking to Rick. And he told Rick that your son is going to die too. And then he goes on. And he, and, he, and, he, and he goes on to talk, talk to Rick, and he uh, and he tells Rick about the weak inheriting, well, basically inheriting the earth, 
telling him basically only the strong survive and Morgan want to keep that mindset now. He's so basically he's trying to think clear. And then in this episode, it's revealed that Rick actually still believes in God because I remember in season two he questioned his religion. But in this episode, he tells Morgan, I swear to God, when he was trying to, to explain to Morgan that he can't that he was actually trying to get in contact with him through all that stuff that happened. He said, I swear to God, I was trying to. So he actually still believes in God. And Rick head seems very clear. I'm not saying it's completely clear, but it's there. Next. Did y'all see Michonne with a crossbow? Now it's possible that's Daryl's new crossbow because that bad boy looks nice. Looks very nice. Now, last, because like I said, what Morgan said about the weak inheritance in the earth, that was very deep. And the last scene they talk, talked about Rick was telling Morgan that the prison was safe, and Morgan questioned what well, well, questioned his um his question that he told him. He says basically, if the if the prison's so safe, why your wife die? And Rick really couldn't answer that. And Morgan basically gives him the gun because he know Morgan knows a war is about to start, and he tells Rick, "Cause if you got something good." That just means that there's someone who wants to take it. And Rick and, and then um and then Morgan said, that's happening, right? And then Rick replies, We're gonna win. And then Morgan says, You you will be turned you will be you will be torn apart by teeth or bullets, but not me. I'm not gonna watch that happen again. So he made it clear. He don't want to see no more blood. He's tired of that. He's not joining. Now, I do feel bad for him not coming, but I'd rather him still be alive than die in that war. So, overall, good episode. Loved it. I love it. Great character development. I probably want to, I wouldn't say it's the best episode, but pretty damn good. So, I, uh, like I said, the weak inheritance the earth very deep. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. 27 minutes. So uh remember to subscribe, rate, comment, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. Peace.